Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just we want to thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for every testimony this morning. Thank you for the exhortation. Thank you that you are mindful of us. You are concerned about us. Lord, you are the one who's leading us, guiding us in this times like this, the days which are so terrible in the world, but you are there with us and you are willing to intervene in our lives when we submit to you, Lord, Father God, even as you send this word now, Father, let this word go into our hearts, Father God, that we may be changed and be transformed, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I'll take you to the word straight away. So last week we learned, we tried to understand the promise that we have, the nine facets or the nine uh, promises which were there in that one promise that we have. So I also sent you the uh, notes on your WhatsApp for you to just to get, just sit down and take them one by one. Apply uh, those things into your life. First, understand your promise. The second thing is to appropriate the promise. And I said we always give you direction that uh, we also give the that's uh, the uh, scriptures on the, your promise card. Um, and we have the scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 6, 11 and 12. Uh, it's not, even though it's just two verses, it's more than that two verses. Because everything uh, depends, your promise to appropriate, it depends upon how you take the direction towards it. All these promises will be given to us. They are for us. Every other promise in the Bible is also for us. However, we need to appropriate them with few things, uh, taking uh, into account few important things. And when you call it the year of divine intervention, intervention is needed only when you cannot handle. So we are going through situations in the world. The church is going through, individual families are going through, individuals are going through, children are going through with various difficult situations at your jobs, in your families, with your finances, with your health conditions. There are difficult things. Unless God himself intervenes, sometimes we cannot do anything about it. So this morning, it's important that we take advantage of the promise that we have uh, by obeying what God wants us to do. So 1 Timothy Chapter 6, verse 11. But you, O man of God, to all of us, we are all men and women of God, flee these things, number one, and pursue, number two, or follow righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. And number three, in verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So this is the promise which Pastor Dennis mentioned. He said he talked about three F's. What it is? Flee, follow and fight. I want to take advantage of those two, three words. Uh, the follow is actually pursue in the scripture. So three F's. Flee, follow and fight. Now when in this verse where it said flee these things. Flee these things is not in your words. But what you have to follow is there in this particular verse. So what things we must flee from? It's very important. Until you flee from the things that has been commanded to us, we are still not in a position to appropriate the promise. So we will try to learn from which things we need to flee from. So same chapter Verse 3 onwards we have to read to understand from the things that we need to flee. Verse 3 onwards, chapter 6, verse 3. If anyone teaches otherwise, not in the right way, but otherwise, and does not consent to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, hold on to that, and uh, to the doctrine which accords with godliness. Verse 4 also, he is proud, that person who does not know, I mean the, the man who is proud, he, he is proud also and knowing nothing, he doesn't know anything, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling and evil suspicions. 
verse 5 also let's read unless wranglings of men of corrupt useless wranglings of suspicions useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain for such from such withdraw yourself these are the things there are many things so it's important for you to work on the scriptures what is important here is the doctrine of jesus christ if some the world in throughout the world the doctrine of jesus christ is perverted by many people who are self centered who are greedy for gain who wants to have their own way they are actually distorting the doctrine of lord jesus christ so from such people we should be away from if you are listening to preachings listen to them it's not i'm not saying you should not listen but you should be in a position to recognize whether the doctrine is right or incorrect if you are a person who meditate upon the word of god constantly as it is written 1 Josh, joshua 1:8 day and night if you are a person who thinks of the kingdom of god then you will be in a position to quickly identify wrong doctrines if they're not given to you from the word of god if man tries to manipulate those things and give you a different meaning to it then be careful including me let me be very open to you if you find such things happening you have two choices first of all not follow what you heard second choice is if you have an opportunity talk about it if it is to the pastor if you have a question please be feel free to talk to me i will try my best never to fall into those traps but then i'm still a man all right okay let me go further then in this so the doctrine of jesus is number one what is uh, let me read the verse 3 again if anyone teaches otherwise does not consent to the wholesome words even the words of lord jesus christ and the and to the doctrine which accords with godliness so godliness is important and he is a proud man generally such preachers are very proud knowing nothing they don't know much nothing but is obsessed with disputes they mostly bring disputes into their preachings rather than telling the word of god sharing the word of god the important things important instructions the promises the blessings instead of that dispute and try to uh, uh, di- uh, try to uh, uh, what you call uh, 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 i mean talk about all these preachers telling about oh this preacher is this this preacher is this and about trying to talk about the preachings and so on and arguments over words from which come envy and when such people do what comes is result is envy strife reviling and evil suspicions and useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth who suppose that godliness is means of gain there are people for them godliness if i have this if i do these things i will have some gain and generally it is about financial gain and in the same thing the second thing is there is a, a snare of desire to be rich let me take you to the scripture verse 9 the same chapter verse 9 but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition verse 10 for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from faith and faith in their god in greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows now what is talking about is desiring to be rich brothers and sisters i don't know what you think i like to be rich if possible that desire somewhere it comes in our flesh every human 
rich means why we want to be rich is we all think if I have money, I can sort out many things in my life. Many problems, many difficulties, uh, obstructions and I've connected with money. So we think in a way, I wish I had a little bit more money. I wish I had a promotion. I, I wish my salary is increased. I wish, and some people who are in business, if I can get more profits. Then the others go into our next level, which is called greed. Desiring to have a little more money, it's fine. Greed, because I want everything for myself. Why shouldn't I have more things? Why shouldn't I have a big things? Why shouldn't I have greater things? You know, that way, a greed comes in. And then, verse 10, as it says, For the love of money is root of all kinds of evil. Lots of evil that takes place around the world. All the corruption that takes place in all the countries, in our own country, even every place, the corruption is to just get some money, more money, whether they need it or not. More than they need, they are looking for such money. And what they do? They murder. They suppress somebody. They destroy somebody. They defame somebody. They do all kinds of evil to get more money for themselves. So for the love of money. Now here, you have a need. Your God and my God is able to meet your need. In the right time, in the right way. And we all know some of us have little more money than the others. But understand this, brothers and sisters, it does not depend, your life or your joy does not depend upon how much you have or somebody who has less than you or somebody has more than you. Because the joy comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy is in God himself. For somebody, he gives more so that God knows that those people can be blessing to somebody. If they're greedy, they will face their own situations. But God knows some people are able to give the, to them, he gives more. Some people cannot handle money. They don't have the ability to handle money. So God doesn't want to give such people such money. If you remember the story about the talents, God gave who gained with five talents, five talents. The one who did not gain anything, he took his and gave it to the man who had more. So who has more will be given more. This is the reason God understands than anybody else. So don't worry about those things. That's not my original preaching, but I want you to know, don't get worried about your financial status. Trust the Lord. Faith is more important. Okay, let me take you. So, so money is a snare. Uh, it's a snare to, be, to become, to the, the, feel, the, the desire to become rich is a snare of the evil one. All right. Now, the best suggestion comes from the same scripture, same, same passage, verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6 says, in chapter 6 and verse 6 says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Simple word. You must be godly, submitted to God, obeying God, following God, with contentment, with whatever you have, you must be content with that. You must express your joy and praise and worship to the Lord in the position that you are in. There are people sitting under the tree. There are churches where they meet under a tree. And they still praise the Lord. Worship the Lord. They clap, sing joyfully, full of heart. And then some people want big churches. They want large churches. They want lots of facilities. Well, that's not the requirement. God blesses you with, it's fine. But then, what is important, wherever you are, you must be content. The verse 7 says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these things we shall be content. Hallelujah. The basic things when you are having, just be happy. In the world, there are people who do not even have water every day, a clean water to drink every day. We should not forget their lives too. So we must trust and worship the Lord. Every, 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 uh, 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 what you call morsel, if not more than a morsel. My father, my grand, I remember my grandfather, our house, in those, when we were kids, it was a mud house. Even when a rice, one grain falls down, he used to pick that up and keep. He left a, uh, uh, an example for us in those days. He says, it's important. Yes, there were bags and bags of rice next to us, but he never left it. He says, somebody would need this. Okay. So, the first thing that we learned here is, 
that to be away from wrong doctrines. People talk about money a lot. Talk everything about money, everything becoming rich, which is called prosperity gospel. And we were under such a gospel at certain time. We were, we were, we didn't know what to do. We were, we were sent astray in that particular kind of teachings. In certain time, our chum, some of our church people were there, but God delivered us from that place. Thank God. Hallelujah. The second thing that we want to know is. The second is pursue. So we must follow, flee from false doctrines. Second thing is pursue. Pursue what? What to pursue or what to follow. And I want to call it the virtues. The virtues, you must look for them and follow them. Or fruit of the spirit. First let me read from First Timothy, same chapter, chapter 6 verse 11. 11 says, but you, O man of God, flee these things which you learn. Now pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and patience, and gentleness. We have a couple of, a few of these. Righteous, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? But then, all these are very, very close to the fruit of the spirit they are very close to the fruit of the spirit most of them they are taken from that that's what it looks like so then let us get the complete understanding of the fruit of the spirit let's go to book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. And verse 23 says, and, and gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law. If you have these things manifesting in your life, I want to tell you this one thing. When Holy Spirit comes upon you, He brings two things into your life. One is, He comes with His gifts. But out of the nine gifts, He gives Everybody, few, maybe one to somebody, three to somebody, nine to somebody, six to somebody. So he gives the gifts of the Spirit. While he gives us the gifts of the Spirit, he also brings the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. But the fruit of the Spirit is in completeness. It is not fruits of the Spirit. It's one fruit having, it's like an orange having nine portions uh, what are those things called in English? Anybody knows? Segments. Okay, that's fine. It sounds good. Very technical. <laughs> because in our language, we have a word for this. Uh, in, in my language, I don't even know in Hindi. In Hindi, we can't say it. Obi can So in my language, it's called Tona. One, each one is called Tona. Each one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so this like having this nine segments in one fruit. Or nine ingredients in one fruit. So when Holy Spirit came upon you, He came with those whole fruit of the Holy Spirit and is inside of you. It is your job or it is you who have to do something to manifest all the nine segments of this fruit. Amen. Now Paul, Apostle Paul, I, I, I go, I'll pass my time. Actually, I'm, I'm still, I'm not able to finish the whole thing, but let me tell you this. Apostle Paul, when he wrote this epistle to Corinthians, starting from chapter 12, then he comes to 13 and completes with 14, he talks about the gifts of the Spirit and he also tries to bring an understanding, people who have gifts of the Spirit and who moves in the gifts of the Spirit generally become proud. He did not use the word I used this. They have a problem. They become proud. And that's what he says. And when he reaches to the last words of chapter 12, I have a better thing to tell you. Then he starts with the chapter 13 where he talks about love. And he says, love is greatest of all things. He ends chapter 13. 
and he tries to give you a little bit more explanation in chapter 14 how these gifts of the spirit must be you know practiced that's what he shares with you so what he says if you have the gifts of the spirit there is a possibility you may become proud if you have good prophets yeah they can be proud and that's what's been happening so in the denominations in the world what you call the Pentecostals who talks about the gifts of the Spirit and the Baptist and the Methodist and other people they talks of the fruit of the Spirit, especially the Baptist. So the Baptist always focus on the bapt- fruit of the Spirit, being good, being nice, more loving. Us, they are very loving people. However, they miss something, the gifts of the Spirit. They actually say, no gifts of the Spirit. So that makes a problem with them. So God wants us to have everything together. Amen? So, what it says, so now I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit, just we read. And also, uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 17 talks about some more things. I want to add into this list. I will send you these notes also. For Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not a party. Kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost, the presence of the Holy Spirit is upon, when you rejoice in the Spirit, it's a spiritual joy. It does not come from outside. It comes from your inside because the Spirit is uh, bubbling from inside of you, comes out. This joy, this is the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, when you are righteous, walking righteousness of God, and when you are peace, and the joy in the Holy Spirit is there, you are full of the Spirit. Now one more thing I want to take, one more scripture. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will be, uh, will, will see the Lord. Now all this ingredient I spoke to you, I want, I'm not explaining you sometime in the ear as I preach some of these things, I'll bring back again and talk in details with you. But what I want you to understand, you need to pursue to get all these things, the fruit of the Spirit in your life. It is important. Only then you will appropriate the promise of God. You must put all your efforts. You must read. You must read books on that. You must read the Word of God. You must hear sermons concerning them and follow them then you will be able to appropriate the promise of God. First is, flee from wrong doctrines and follow all the virtues God wants us to have. And as I mentioned, I already told you, the best thing to follow in the virtues is love. Get the description from chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. And the third thing is, fight a good fight of faith. The third thing. This is an important ingredient in Christian life. All of us here don't want to have fight. Is that right? Anybody likes to have fight? Or anybody likes to fight? Hello? Come. Uh, you need to fight. Fight for your right, as some people say. But the thing is, generally, we don't want to get into that kind of friction in our lives. That's what I'm trying to say. We don't want it, but... God says you need to fight. That's the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Uh, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. It says, Fight the good fight of faith. It's not fight of any things. Good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. There's two things. What I want you to focus back is Sister uh, Bindu's uh, testimony, Brother uh, Vishwas's, you know, Uh, encouragement, we need to look to our eternal life more than the life on this earth. But unfortunately, we love the life on the earth. I want to tell this feeling. I I want to be open and tell you the truth. Uh, The day we were going to Cochin, the day also was raining, as you know, it was raining already. So our flight took off from Dubai airport. And first 20 minutes, it was very bad turbulence. I, I knew that the flight has not even taken the higher altitude. It still was low. It gives you really fear when you're in a low altitude, when the flight seems to be coming down and going up and suddenly and quickly falls down. I had that fear in me. I had. 
Then I began to pray. Normally I say, Lord, it's, it's okay, you'll take care. But that fear just came into me. I began to pray. Then I prayed, Lord, it's okay. It's okay. I know you'll protect me. But if you don't protect me, I know where I will be. So that, until to reach to that place, it took me some time. If you are focused on your eternal life, my brothers and sisters, when things go wrong in the world, you'll not be afraid. Fear may come, but this right thinking will take away your fears. You'll face every situation by the power of God. Hallelujah. Okay. So now what I want to do, good fight of faith. I want to take you a little deeper into this. Why? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, the known, very known scripture. Hebrews 11 6. It says, but without faith it is impossible to please God. And for he who comes to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's what his faith is all about. You need to have faith. If you don't have faith, God won't like it. Why God won't like it? Why God wants you to have faith? Okay, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, means our adversary, our, our enemy, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom may, he may devour. Constantly, from day one, the devil was thrown out of heaven. Devil is looking for one thing, how he can hurt God. First time he hurt God was when he cheated Eve and made her to eat the fruit and Adam also. He thought, it's, oh, he got it all. But God had alternative plans, sending by Jesus Christ, and he took all the sins of the people, and the victory was won. Victory is won, and victory is still ruling over the life of the enemy. But the devil is not leaving. He'll continuously want to hurt God. In order to hurt God, he'll hurt you. He will cheat you with his lies. Now what he says, he is roaming Ro, ro, he is walking about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And verse 9 says, resist him. That is fight. How? Resist him. Con continuously, you must be able to recognize the various traps and the various tricks of the devil. And willing to, you must be willing to resist him constantly. Resist him. How? Steadfast in faith. Hallelujah. Why God wants you to have faith? Why? Because he knows his enemy, our enemy is one. Only by faith in the word of God, you will be able to resist him. Without faith, you cannot resist him. And the word, the verse, Let me continue the verse 9. Steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. The whole world is going through the same problem. But if you are a person with strong faith, you will be able to resist and have victory over him. Also, we know this powerful promise given by the Lord Jesus Christ. Book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you authority to trample the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So your faith should be in this promise. He will come to fight with you, but you have the power and authority to trample him under your foot. Amen. Can you hold that in your hearts? Okay, that's the reason why you need to have do a good faith, a fight of faith. Furthermore, and our faith, our, we are in a fight. Why he gave this promise? We are in a fight. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. So we are in continuous fight with the spiritual forces in the heavenly places. Spiritual forces in the darkness. The rulers. Rulers are not talking about some earthly kings or presidents, prime ministers. It's not like that. These are the wicked forces which are having dominion over the affairs on earth. The governments are led by the spiritual forces. Governments are dictated by the spiritual forces. And all the laws and authorities are made by the spiritual forces. But we are having a fight with them. And we have authority over them in the name of Jesus. 
right? So you don't have to worry about it. Constantly, you must focus the sword of the spirit against the spiritual spirits. That is, sword of the spirit is word of God. You must have the word in you. Okay. About, but before showing the sword of the spirit, now these are, now what the devil does is, he sends his arrows against us. Okay, let me read the scripture. Verse 16, Ephesians 6, 16. Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now what is this fiery darts? More than anything the devil does to you is try to take away your faith. He sends doubts every day. Is God really listening to your prayers? You asked him, did he actually give you? Even last year you had a promise. Anything happened to your life in the last year's promise. So what if these promises are just simply empty words? These are the thoughts you may get. You will get specially when you are going through difficult times. Suddenly, you have been praying for something. You get an answer. It doesn't happen to you. You are asking for healing. It doesn't happen to you. You are asking for some salary raise. It doesn't happen to you. You are asking something for the children's education. It doesn't happen to you. You think, is really God answering my prayer? And that's the doubt the devil brings and puts in your heart. Now, when the devil spoke to, uh, 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 spoke to Eve, he said, really God said this to you? You cannot eat this fruit? Yes, if you eat, we will die. Surely you will not die. It's a doubt. That's what he says. Lies. Continuously. So he by his lies, he puts doubt in us. The only thing that can stop these darts or these arrows against us is the shield of faith. You say, I believe. I believe. The word of God says this promise. The word of God says this promise. According to this promise, my God is going to do. Shut up, you devil. This is the only way. This is how you will fight the fight of faith. And furthermore, that you know, furthermore, you need to increase your faith by constantly reading the Word of God. Now we learned the promise for this year that He will, uh, he will have it's the year of divine intervention. When you are in difficult times, suddenly God will come and intervene into your matter. And he will protect you. When he will do this, when you actually believe that God has given this promise to you. Amen. He will be with you. He will go before you. He will strengthen you. He will uphold you. He will guide you. He will teach you his word. He will continuously be present with you. He will do all those things through them. He will divinely bless you and lead you and guide you. That's the promise. However, these three things flee from wrong doctrines, wrong word, and pursue to follow all the virtues God wants us to follow. And the third thing is fight a good fight of faith. Have faith. In the days to come, we may learn a little bit stronger things concerning faith and so on. And let's do those things. Amen. And so this morning, I want to call you and ask you, would you want to follow what you learned today. Will you flee from ungodly counsel, ungodly teaching, strong doctrines? Would you want to uh, fight the good fight, fight of faith? Would you want to for, have all those virtues God wants us to have? Shall we close our eyes? Just take two minutes. Tell yourself, Here I am, Lord. I heard your word this morning. Lord, I want to get the promise becoming alive in my life. And as you say, I also want to follow your direction. To be careful to recognize the wrong doctrines in the world. To be careful to follow all those virtues that you've given to us. To be careful and not fear the devil when he comes to fight me. I'll fight him stronger than 
the devil is because you gave me all authority over all his power and nothing can harm me taking the shield of faith oh lord in your word this must be your prayer this morning i will do this lord and i'll be victorious lord mahatakrabi under krupashi ki Father, we trust in you, Father God. Through faith, we'll stand against all the works of the evil one. And teach us by your Holy Spirit, Lord, to flee from all wrong doctrines, Father, and follow all your virtues. Filled with your Holy Spirit, in the joy of the Spirit that we may live, Father God. The rest of our life, Father God, lead us and guide us, Father God. And as we go home, let your presence go with us. leaders and guides we also remember past dennis and family as they return back bring them back safely father and also those who are going on vacation also traveling be with them oh father god thank you lord for your love your glory honor and praise in jesus most precious name we pray